Maar Menissi werd in 1940 in een harem in Marokko geboren. Over haar jeugd in een harem schreef ze een boek getiteld Het Verboden Dakteras. Daarna schreef ze een boek, De Europese Harem, waarin ze uitlegt hoe Westelingen reageerden op het verboden dakterras. Ze schrijft dat mannelijke journalisten, vrouwelijke journalisten, komt ze zelden tot mij tegen. Stefas als eerste de vraag aan Menissi stelde, zo mevrouw, dus u bent in een harem geboren. En dan begonnen ze te giechelen. Ons beeld van de harem als een plek waar vrouwen naakt, wellustig en onderdanig zijn, blijkt volgens Menissi totaal niet te kloppen. In werkelijkheid zijn de vrouwen in een harem gekleed, strijdvaardig en zeer machtig. Een terugkerend motief in haar werk is Sherazade uit Duizend en een Nacht, die haar leven redt door iedere avond, iedere nacht, aan haar man, de koning, een ander verhaal te vertellen en daardoor wordt ze niet vermoord. Haar werk, Menissi's werk, is tegelijkertijd een apologie van de verbeeldingskracht en een apologie van de cultuur waarvan ze zich niet heeft kunnen of willen bevrijden. Ze beschrijft de harem tegelijkertijd als een paradijs en als een gevangenis. Dat leidt soms wel eens tot merkwaardige zinnen, zoals bijvoorbeeld... Vrouwen worden in de islam, net als christenen en joden, als gelijke van de mannen beschouwd. Ook al krijgen ze een minderheidsstatus met beperkte burgerrechten, waardoor ze geen toegang hebben tot het maatschappelijk besluitvormingsproces. Zijn vrouwen in theorie de gelijke van de man? Of ook in praktijk? Of alleen in de fantasie van Menissi? In dit boek, uh, Shirazade Goes West, at the end of it, you describe a beautiful scene. You are in New York, you go into a shopping mall, and you try to buy a skirt. And then the salesperson, the woman says, I, I don't have your size. All I have is size six, you are too big. And then you have a revelation. Could you, could you tell me about what happens to you at that moment? Yes. The, the revelation is, I always, uh, always I had a big... Uh, hips okay. and in uh, my face medina when i'm walking tall with big uh, uh, back they always oh wonderful wonderful now i always kept in my mind that it's very uh, sexy to have a big uh, hips mm -hmm. and here i am where she tells me it's 36 which is 36 is not even my knees and uh, I was just struck me then that the worst harem is if you could tell me that I should have size 36, which means that you never grow to become a, woman. a mature woman. You have to, sm to be small. And then I realized that the harem of the clever Westerners is to block women in time harem, not in space. Uh -huh. Uh, so that instead of, uh, and this is more pernicious because the women cannot fight it. Because you are telling them, if you want to be beautiful, you have to stay thin. young, and young. thin, just like young woman. And you even make the provocative statement that you say we, we, the Muslim women, they have one Ramadan. And the Western women, they have 12 uh, months. Every, every month uh, is Ramadan. Yes. You really uh, believe that? Of course, because I was teaching uh, in uh, 78 uh, in uh, America, and I uh, always ask the, uh, my, the other women professors, I ask her, oh, why don't you come to look, because I am into, I live four months on the beach. I huh? like to look at the uh, sunset, okay. and f mostly the full moon sunset, because the moon, when it's coming out on the 14th of the lunar month, the other, the moon is up when the okay. sun goes down. And I ask them, do you want to walk uh, to see the full moon? Or they tell me, no, no, we, ha we are, we are jogging. Okay. They are jogging. And then I discovered that they have two jobs. They teach at the university, but the rest of the time, they are into fitting and uh, running I mean, it's another job, it and, I, and But I... why do you think that it's impossible to fight against this... You said it's not possible for... Uh, like, you could fight against the harem, but the Western women, they can't. Yes, because the Western harem, it uses space. So, it blocks, it says space, there is two divided into two. Private is the harem, which is the family space, where the women ought to be. Mm -hmm. Public that is the streets, the parliament, 
That's political and the women... That's the public space. Sh that's public space. And the women shouldn't be there. If you want to be there, you have to put cover your face. a veil. To cover yeah. the face so that you are there, but you are, don't belong. Uh, so it's much easier to be fighting against this space kind of, harem yeah. than a, against time harem, because time harem is invisible. The, the uh, European, he says to the woman, my dear, you are my equal, you can go to public space, you can go to the parliament, you are my equal. But he used the beauty and the marketing to, to send another message that you have to be beautiful. And to be beautiful, you are skinny. Therefore, she can be parliamentarian, but right. half of her time. While, like parliamentarian in Holland, he could be very big, he has and no problem. And mm -hmm. But the woman, parliamentarian, she also has to be very beautiful, female. female, and probably she is running and trying to be skinny, because... But I'm trying to suggest that the Western women are as oppressed as the women in Morocco were, as you I, were? I, uh, definitely, I, what strikes me is that a lot of intellectual women mm -hmm. are not aware when they are jogging that they are giving in to so. Monsieur Lagerfeld and uh, old fashion and, and Christian Dior and all that. That strikes me that they don't uh, make the link that to be always on a diet or to be always uh, jogging or trying to be skinny, that they are manipulated. I am surprised. For me, it's evident. You quote also in this book the philosopher Immanuel Kant, who said that intelligent, educated women, they, they could have a beard. They're not, they're not yeah. female anymore. I am so happy that the Arabs don't know about Monsieur Kant. Kant. Because what happened then? Fa fanatic Arabs would use Monsieur Kant and translate him and tell us that this is the European thinker and I am so happy they don't know about but him. But one of the things you would like to do is to bring a, a thinker, philosopher like Immanuel Kant to Morocco, to the Arabic world, don't you? Uh, I, I think he will, he, he will have a problem of credibility because in right. the Arab world, mm -hmm. the idea is the woman's brain is powerful and more powerful than the man because he can manipulate them. The woman is Shahrazad. Shahrazad can, you see the, the story of Shahrazad? The, she marries this king. king who was angry because his first wife betrayed him. Betrayed him. So, but he didn't know he was angry. He was just, he said every day, I want to marry a woman, he kills her at, in the morning. But Shahrazad analyzed him and started telling him stories with suspense. Mm -hmm. So that he, by the end, he says, okay, I have to know the story. He doesn't want to and kill that's why her. that's he saved her life. Saved her life. So that's the power of words you described the, here. Yes, because she made him, after six months, yes. who, he was listening to her, he said, Shahrazad, I know I was angry and I couldn't communicate and this is why I was killing. So he... he so this, you describe her as a very good psychologist, yeah, basically? Yes. Yes, communication worked. Yeah. Uh, before this conversation with a cup of coffee, and you told me that you think language, communication is not about language. Oh, I, I absolutely, I know that because... But that's... that's Basically, now you're saying the opposite, because this woman, Shahrazad, she seduced the king with words, with language, not uh, with her body. Yes, uh, she, the, uh, she seduced him by uh, understanding, guessing what's his problem. And, well, you know, I believe, I am, I am a big believer in Shahrazad. I know. The man have all the power but they have one taboo in all cultures the man cannot say i am afraid men cannot talk about fear mm -hmm. 
And I think this is Shahrazad's genius, is when she sees a violent man, she knows it's a man who is afraid. I could say the same for Bush. Okay. He is just an afraid kid. But he cannot say it. He cannot say, I am afraid. A man in all cultures, they are forbidden from saying they are afraid. But so I, yeah. she read. But, but let's go back to this statement you said, communication is not about language. Please explain again what do you yes. mean with that. Very often I give an example. Could violence be communication? Uh -huh. Violence? No, I make a safe well, kalam. Safe is the sword and the pen. Mm -hmm. Safe is you kill the enemy. Kalam is you communicate with the enemy. You use words to communicate. And Shahrazad, she used words to communicate with the enemy and she transformed him into a friend, which is her husband. So language is important? Absolutely. And in fact, for the, the Arabs, they made the power by the language. The, the Islam spread with the Arabic language. But do you think you can fight violence with language? With Absolutely, communication. Just like Shahrazad with her husband. But if I'm going, if I want to kill you, what are you going to do against me with, with if I have a sword or a weapon? You, how can you prevent me from killing but, you just with language? No, bien sûr. You communicate even now there is big debate in the Arab world. You know, there is, the, in the Arab world there is a, a, a revolution, satellite revolution. It's the biggest industry we have. In Which 1990, there was one satellite television uh, in Baghdad when they were bombing Baghdad, and that was CNN. And now, 19, 2004, the bombs sent by the Americans on Baghdad, they are filmed not CNN, we don't see CNN anymore, we have 145, 40, 140 satellite channel. Mm -hmm. All Arabic, European or what? E Arab language, okay. it is the second after English in satellite broadcasting. It okay. is the second uh, language of the world now in satellite so broadcasting. So what did this revolution do to the people? Yes. What? Uh, communication, the, the big debate now, Yes. the fanatics, in the Arab world, they come to the television, they have to explain why are they using violence. Does it help them? This is, the, of course, it, he cannot... It helps the fanatics or not? Not that. He, he, he changed his politics. But how come, like, today... He, you cannot, In a newspaper in the New York Times, I read that 75% of the Moroccan people think that suicide bombings against Westerners are okay. How do you explain that? I... 75%? Da, just a minute. Okay. Just a minute. You see, these statistics you are giving, mm -hmm. there is a lot of money going in selling you the idea that the Moroccans are terrorists. This is not by chance that you have these statistics and not mine. But was in the New York Times. So you uh, say but the New York Times for me, you it's... Don't... New York Times for me, it's corporate money. New York Times is not sacred. And it's not... Uh, uh, democracy, uh, it's not, it's corporate money, just oh. like the American army. So what do you Who think? Who is behind, you so why are true? you so, uh, why do you believe what... Uh, I'm asking you, if what, yeah, what, why don't you try to see what Al Jazeera is saying? Do you think Al Jazeera is saying something else? Of course they are. So what are they saying? Okay, alors, this is for me the challenge. My dream is someone, a young communicator, you are penman, you mm -hmm. are writer, that you, my dream is you don't get your information only from American sources, but also from Arab sources. But this is our job. So how many, what, with, how many people in, in Morocco do you think would approve suicide bombings? The, by the way, 
I don't believe that the, the statistics, yeah. I am a sociologist. Okay, I know, I know. So, when you are telling me how much we need money to do this survey mm -hmm. in, in Morocco, so I cannot, I am not like the, the statistics of the New York Times, I doubt very much because I heard a lot of their statistics they do by telephone. Of course, sometimes. Now, it is impossible, I'm a sociologist, in the Arab world, if I make a telephone and someone told me, are you for suicide bombing or not? But I don't answer, an Arab doesn't answer such a serious question on the telephone, because we think that if the police, some kind of police is calling, we don't answer this kind of uh, telephone calls. This is why I don't believe in the statistics. So could the, you do research on this subject, or is it impossible? Because you say, you're saying you yes, can't do it by phone. Yes, there is research on, on the topic, and there is statistics on the young people. In, like, my university, Mohammed V, I can give you the name of the sociologist who is your age, who has done lately statistics. And, and of course, the there, are, there is a lot of scorn for violence. Because the, the Arabs are now anti-violence because they see the killing every day of Palestinians and of Iraqi. So there is a huge anti-violence movement in the Arab world. So the, the violence turned the Arabs into a peaceful, in, made them yes, peaceful? Yes, absolutely. It is so recreating the, the jadal, which is that you kill with, you buy, you fight with words, not with arms. Okay, thank you.